Let's start the day and this video with a quick beach cleanup. First, we got a bottle cap, a little blue box. We got a crushed up can and a crunchy water bottle. Nice. All right, let's get started. Hi, was I born in 1996? Yes. Am I still going to make this entire video about toys? Yeah. I'm still writing toy review. Okay, picture this. Right here, this is a picture of me as a little kid. There are so many things in my adult life that help take the edge off and get me through the day, but back then, all I needed was some chocolate milk and some rescue heroes. Rescue hero! Those two words rattle the walls of my brain to this very day. Rescue heroes were little action figures based off of everyday heroes like firefighters. And not only that, they also rewired my brain for decades. Rescue I also loved Mighty Beans as a kid. I would have a hoot and a holler playing with these. Oh, and what about Hot Wheels? Am I capable of pointing out what a Subaru looks like in a mildly occupied parking lot? No. But I love playing with these little cars. These were some of my favorite toys as a kid. But did you notice a common theme? Something shared between each of these toys? Well, these toys, and pretty much every toy I played with as a kid, was made with plastic. Yep, I know. I know. But listen, okay, that was like the worst way to segue into my point. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the toy industry overall is not the problem. Modern oil dependency and the overproduction of plastic just enables the toy industry to take advantage of a system that is basically just more toys for less money. They're far from perfect, but it's not entirely the toy industry's fault. I don't want to be that guy. But I do want to be this guy. Hey, why do people bring plastic toys to the beach with no intention of bringing them home? You seeing this? And almost every single day that I step on the beach, I find a plastic beach toy just one tide cycle away from getting washed into the ocean. Yeah, that does suck. Now, I'm not a scientist, but if I had to guess, this is what I think is happening the majority of the time. A family will fly down to sunny Florida for a vacation. Well, there's no sandy beaches where they came from, so of course they don't have any beach toys. Thank goodness the local everywhere has beach toys available for them to buy. They're about to have the best two-night vacation ever. But when they go to pack up, oh, well, that's not gonna fit. Maybe if they just leave them here in the sand, somebody will play with them. And you know what? The weird thing is they were kind of right. Someone will play with them if I have anything to say about it. Because of all of these toys, in 2022, I built my first ever toy box and documented the whole entire process. It's an exciting series with twists and turns and you can watch the whole thing on my TikTok. Long story short, the views and support that I was getting for this toy box on TikTok gave me the leverage to have my town council permanently put a toy box on this beach. It's gone through so many different shapes and sizes at this point, but it's made a great impact. Some days it'll be full and then some days it'll be empty, which lets me know that kids are really enjoying playing with the toys that are in there and they're taking them home away from the beach. Not only are we fighting plastic pollution, but we're also giving toys to kids who don't have any. And we're also providing better options than the fast action plastic sold to tourists for a quick buck. Honestly, the toy box changed my life. Ever since I made the first toy box, I have been on the news, spoken at Chamber of Commerce meetings, done a statewide cleanup tour, and best of all, it kind of caught on as a trend and other beaches nearby started adding their own toy boxes. I genuinely am so incredibly grateful that this is my job, but I, really this isn't about me or about how many views or followers I can get. The most important thing to me is working together with you to make a positive impact in the biggest way we can. And that's why I'm so stoked for today's video, actually for a couple reasons. First, I want to talk about how to sustainably make a toy box. Next, I want to show you how you can successfully and legally add a toy box to your community. And finally, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to skip this one for now. We'll come back to this point later. First, let's learn how to sustainably build a toy box. Psych. So here's the thing. I like to look at my content as what I call guinea pig content, which means that I'm going to throw myself in situations like going to my first town hall meeting, learning how to properly recycle something, or building a zero waste toy box. And by doing this, I hope to encourage you watching this right now to get started by clearing up some of the unknowns. And I'll always show where I mess up or if I get things wrong, because if you find yourself in that situation, I want you to be able to not make the same mistakes I did. All of that to say, basically, if you're somebody who likes upcycling, crafts, building things, local government or community involvement, I dive deep into all of those topics on my series on TikTok. So please, if you're interested in any of those topics that I just named, go check out that series or just hit me up if you have any questions. For this video though, I have discovered an entirely new method of getting a toy box in your community. So if you're into repurposing, secondhand shopping, antiques, or green collaborations, 
This is your video. Okay, so the way that I found this new method is, well, I suck at building things, and I just wanted to avoid doing that again by any means necessary. But I still want to use upcycled or repurposed wood to hold all of these toys. The last toy boxes I would make, I would literally just walk around town until I found disregarded wood planks or pallets, and I would use that as the toy box. This time around, though, I think we like, we need like a treasure chest, you know, something like really rustic that looks like you just ripped it from Davy Jones himself. But the glass bottles that I find on shore never have any treasure maps in them. So we're going to have to find a treasure chest somewhere else. Facebook Marketplace has them though. Really cool ones actually, almost exactly what I was picturing. And I got to give credit where it's due. Facebook Marketplace is so rad. One of the largest social platforms essentially just created a giant virtual garage sale and it's benefited communities all over the world in a number of ways. It's not uncommon for like your thrift store donation to just end up in a landfill. And most of the time when you make that donation, you get zero dollars and zero cents. Facebook Marketplace though, not only does it get you paid, it also works wonders in preventing items ranging from e-waste all the way up to furniture from entering our landfills. But I, oh, I just want to be clear real quick, this is not a Facebook ad whatsoever. But like if we could just have more people selling their clothes on Facebook Marketplace as opposed to donating them and then eventually getting them shipped off to a third world country to make a giant clothes mountain, That'd be cool. Anyway, after scrolling through the rustic wooden chest aisle on Facebook Marketplace, I finally found one that I like. And here she is. It's an antique, but I think it'll give the beach a lot of character and make a positive impact for sure. But that brings us to step two. What spot will give us the highest impact and how can we legally leave the box there? Well, throughout my box journey, I've learned a few things about this very topic. One, if you put a toy box on public land, you need the proper permits and permissions or else they'll just take the box and throw it in a landfill. Definitely learn that one the hard way. Two, you gotta know when and where the town council is gonna meet next so you can go and pitch them your idea. Finally, number three, it just comes down to patience after that. But that's the old method. This is the new method. I found a loophole. But first, let's look at what part of the beach I chose. This is the pier just north of the other toy box. This spot is pretty popular with tourists and I can almost always find toys out here. So I really think this could be a great place for a toy box and I think the kids would love it too. We know we can't just leave a toy box wherever we want without the proper permits and permissions unless unless it's private property if you or someone you know owns beachfront property like a restaurant a surf shack an airbnb you can skip all of the county permissions and just drop that box on your property whenever you want to as long as it's like still on the property line so now that we know that Luckily, just a few steps down the pier is the Seaside Seabird Sanctuary. I've hit them up and we've been chatting about leaving a toy box on their slice of the beach. And I think it would fit perfect here. They already have a take a book, leave a book library. And our toy box is literally just that with toys. A one little asterisk though, they are an organization with a board of members, so they still have to vote on this idea, but regardless, this is way faster. Now, in the meantime, this toy box doesn't have any toys in it. It's currently 5 a.m. Somebody get this early bird a worm. This is the best time to pick up toys. Anyway, oh wow, I'm so tired. Yeah, let's just get, go, let's go to the beach. When I first got to the beach, it was so dark. It's so dark. And honestly, I don't know what I was thinking, but finding toys in just pure darkness is not easy. I did manage to find a couple things though, including this bizarre shark toy. Eventually, as the sun started to rise, I could like actually see, which made finding things a lot easier. Please watch this. As I was filming the sunrise, this little bird just kind of showed up and we watched the sunrise together. And this was the only bird around at the time, just vibing, like just pure vibes. But when I went to go grab the goggles, I think I scared the bird a little bit. But then I saw this, just a yellow lid going for a morning surf. Popped the crocs off because I had to go into the ocean to grab this thing. It was worth it. And at the end of my morning walk, I was able to collect a decent amount of pretty cool toys. Bam! Look at that, the toy box is off to a great start. We're still gonna need some more toys, but for now, this is looking good. Now, I wanna end with this. Sure, we just broke down the method of how you could bring a toy box to your community, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a toy box on the beach. It could be a toy box in the park, or it doesn't even have to be a toy box at all. If you have an idea or see something that needs a solution, getting involved in your community is the most important part of the process. I'll be keeping you all updated with the growth and progression of our toy box, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. And let me know, out of all the toys that you've seen in this video, which one was your favorite? Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Saturday and every Saturday.
Peace. 30,000 people follow me on Instagram, which you totally should too as well. It's right there. Hypothetically, let's say all 30,000 people here followed me specifically because they actively recycle every single day. If I go on my story and say, Hi, everybody. Don't forget to recycle today. 